Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about my um, toolbars. Um, I had a question on one of my, the comments in one of my other videos from Teo, I think it was, Teo Oliver, um, about the, the toolbars that I had set up. Um, admittedly, it was on my um, work computer that you saw them, but I've got fairly similar setup here that I can show you. He in particularly asked me about the colour toolbar. Now, on this setup, I've actually used... This is not my own. This is... This guy's done it, Evil Dragon. He's in the Reaper forums. Um, this is uh, the wiki where you can download this uh, toolbar, all the instructions are here, there's all the downloads, really easy to, to set up. Um, my advice would be to make use of this, it's just so well thought out and it works, basically. Um, on the other hand, if you do want to go about making up your own, I'll go through quickly how to set up a basic colour toolbar um, that might be of use. So if we, uh, let's click up and we'll open a toolbar. Let's open an empty toolbar. I've got number 10 here as empty. And so we can click on Edit Me. And this opens up. First thing we'll do is get rid of Edit Me. So we'll delete that. First of all, we want to be able to edit the, the colours that we, we've got available in our panel. So I think it's under Colour Management, I think. Open colour management window, there it is. And so if we select that and close for now, so we've got this one, we could give this an icon. So if we go change icon, and if we could colour, SWS colour management thing there, um, that'll do it for that. And then we save. So now we've got our first button on our toolbar, which will open up this menu box to edit our custom colours. So we want to add some more to this. So what we want to do, I mean in these custom colours you have 16 custom colours here available. So what we want to do is if we add in um, custom colour Selected track, stroke, item to custom colour. So we've got 1 to 16 there, so we can just select, select, we can put them into order later. So if I go through and add all these in, and then I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, right, we're back. So I've got these 16 in, now we want to put them into order and it's just as simple as dragging them round. So let's just drag these up and down. Again, I'll do this and I'll come back to you because this is boring to watch. Okay, we're back. So now we've got all of these in order. So now what we want to do is if we save this, you can see now that we can set the tracks to different colours. As you can see here, it's working up here. Now, it would be nice to know what colour, but unfortunately, the, it's a little bit beyond me how you get these buttons to change to the actual colour that you've got set in your own custom colours. Um, I don't know if you may be, be able to do this in Evil Dragons, I don't know. But what we can do is if we go into custom colour one, and if we go to icon, change icon. If we scroll down, here are Evil Dragon's buttons that he's used. Now these aren't maybe necessarily the same colour as the colours you've got set up. I've also got these ones here that are possibly a little bit better because um, they've got the numbers in them so you can go by numbers and you know I don't know, it's kind of up to you how you want to do this now. I mean I'm going to use these ones so we set that to number one. Let's move this along. So at least I've got numbers then. So again, I'll set these up and I'll come back to you once these are all done. Okay, so that's all of them in. So we'll save that. So now if we bring up our toolbar, which is number 10 at the moment still, you can see we've got all our, our buttons on there, which correspond to 
uh, custom color set. A couple of other useful buttons that I like to use. Um, if we set in color, the two that I use the most is set selected tracks to one random color, set selected tracks to, to random custom colors. Um, another couple I like to use is set selected tracks to previous tracks color. Let's select that to next tracks color. There it is. Okay, so now there we have, we've got all our buttons in here that we wanted to. So if we save that, I like to use with these ones, I use um, text icons on these. So we go into the text icon. So we go into next track color. Let's just call it that. Delete that. And I like to give these a double width so that I can read them. And there we have. So if we save it, let's give it a name now. So if we press on retitle and let's call it color alternative. And we press OK. Now when we open up, oops, sorry. Open up our toolbars. It, here it is, color alternative. And there we have it. Now what we can do is if we put this in the docker, uh, which is huge, um, and what we'll do is we'll put this in the docker as well. Okay. Now what we can do is take the one that we've just made, the color alternative, if we grab this tab here, from the docker and just pull it out. You see that blue strip? So it can be across the top, the side, the bottom. So if we can just let it go, and there it is where we want. Okay, now we've got our uh, toolbar set up. There's just a couple of things that are probably worth mentioning. If you want to change the custom colors that you've got set up, there are a few choices. I mean, if the theme that you're using has a color set in it then you can choose to load that you can load the color set from file if you've got color set saved you can save your color set obviously but if you come in here to the custom colors you've got two ways of doing this if you select say number one here you can either select a color from here add it to custom colors and that will change as you saw there or if you select that again and then come in here, you can change the color here. You notice you've got your preview few preview here. So if we put it back, we've got the hue set quite light, so you can change the hue so you get a more vibrant or pastel. It's up to you. Um, you know, you can change your color, and then as soon as you've got something you like, you just press Add to custom colors, and it changes. So you can do that with all of these. The other thing worth mentioning is um, with the way this is set up, the, the action that I've used is set track stroke item to custom color. And basically what that means is that um, whatever is selected will change color. So for example, if I double click on this track, what that will do is select the track and it will also select all items within the track. So then I can change the color and everything will change to the same color. Now if I click here in empty space and deselect these items, and then click on the track just once, I can change the color of the track and the background of the items, but you'll notice the waveform stays the same color. Whereas if I double click the track to select everything, press it again, and everything changes to the one color. It works the opposite way as well. If we deselect the track and lasso one of the items by right clicking and pulling a lasso around it, then we can change the color of just that item. And then if we want to change the color of the track by just double clicking or deselecting items, single click on the track, change that without changing. So you could have set items with separate colors that you want to highlight within the same track. Just thing to add is this one, how I customize this from other toolbars is if we open up the tools bar, you can see I've got a few here that I've downloaded from the, the Reaper Stash. I think I got a, a load of toolbars. And what I've done is I've gone through 
And what you do, unfortunately, you've got to do this one by one. But if we go into customize toolbar again, so we're in this envelope parameters, and we say, for example, pick this one, we can right click and do a copy. And then if we go up to my toolbar that I'm using up at the top there, which is that one, we can go down the bottom here, let's click on here, and we can add it in here. And if we right click again and paste, it will position itself above whatever one you had selected. So there it is there. And if we save that, if you watch up at the top, there it is at the, up here now. So I'll just delete that and save. And that's basically how I've organised this toolbar, by taking bits and pieces from other toolbars. Also a few custom actions that have popped in these two. That I think this is a quick Kenny Joy one, and I can't remember who this came from. But I mean, I've got a couple of my own custom actions in there, like my separator track action and whatnot. But that about covers it, I think, for now. Just as a basic kind of overview of how I set my toolbars up. But anyway, I hope that was fairly clear and hopefully it was fairly helpful. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. Flying.